Hi. Official recaps here. Today, I'm going to explain an American science fiction film called, John Carter. Before getting to the video, don't forget to subscribe and leave a like to support the channel. In an exotic world called Barsoom, the film opens. The Helium, the Zodanga, and the Tharks are the planet's three principal kingdoms. The army of Helium, wearing blue capes, is fighting the army of Zodanga, wearing red capes, at the beginning of the film. Three men who identify themselves as Thern, or messengers of God, approach Sab then, the commander of Zodanga. Matai Shang, the chief of the Thern, hands him a mysterious blue sword and claims that the goddess has selected him to receive it. Therns have made the decision to aid Zodanga in the conflict. They are more powerful than the other living things on Barsoom because they have control of the Ninth Ray, a mysterious blue light. Cut to 1881 New York City in the scene. John Carter, the uncle of the man named Edgar, calls him to New York City. The butler for John meets Edgar at the railway and drives him to John's estate. It turns out that John is a wealthy former captain in the Confederate Army. Edgar is regretfully informed by John's attorney of his unexpected passing. John has bequeathed Edgar all of his substantial money. The attorney then leads a shocked Edgar to John's mausoleum, where his corpse is kept in storage. But oddly, the mausoleum's door only opens from the inside. Later, the attorney gives Edgar John's private journal, which John had intended for only Edgar to read. He begins reading it after the attorney has left. It starts by saying that when John was younger, only Edgar believed his crazy claims, thus it seemed only proper to tell Edgar this narrative. After the American Civil War, the narrative begins in Arizona. Former Confederate Army Captain John Carter now explores caves in search of riches. Powell, a colonel in the Union, asks John to aid his U.S. cavalrymen in their fight against the Apache. He kidnaps him then tries to recruit him as a soldier. John, though, has changed his mind about continuing in the military. After several unsuccessful efforts to flee, he finally succeeds by killing a guard and stealing the colonel's horse. Following him are the colonel and his troops. They come discover a mounted Apache warband not far away. The colonel and his soldiers engage the populace in gunfire. In the middle of the pandemonium, John tries to flee, but the colonel is hurt in the struggle. Out of sympathy, he leads the colonel close to a cave and assists him. John has never visited this cave to look for gold, therefore he is unfamiliar with it. He enters, strikes a match, and is astonished to see a large amount of gold lodged in the cave's roof. But just then, a figure from behind him materializes. The dude is one of the characters from the first scene of the film. John is informed by the colonel and engages the odd man in combat. The man is shot by him, causing him to collapse to the ground. When John approaches, he hears the man utter the word, Barsoom, as he examines an odd medallion in his hands. John takes the medallion in his hand and says, Barsoom, aloud. A bright blue light flashes out of the locket all of a sudden. John regains consciousness and finds himself in an unfamiliar wilderness. He stands up and attempts to walk, but he trips over every step. He appears to be able to float in midair. He does his best to stroll in the unfamiliar setting while confused. As he continues to stroll, he comes to a hill nearby and observes numerous eggs hatching. A vast group of six-legged green creatures on enormous animals suddenly appear. John makes a great leap as the commander attacks him. When their leader commands them to stop, the others begin to fire at John. The creature calls himself Tush Tarkas and communicates in a strange tongue. The creatures recognize John as Virginia even though he presents himself as John Carter from Virginia. John refuses Tarkas's request to leap, like he did before, and turns on the man. John is injured by the monsters, who also imprison him. We learn that they are a species known as Tharks when they speak. Deja, the princess of the city of Helium, practices presenting the weapon she has created to her father, the king of Helium, elsewhere on the same planet. Due to Thern's allegiance to Zodanga, the city of Helium, which is at war with it, is likely to lose. The ninth ray employed by the Zodanga to wage war contains a secret that Deja has discovered. However, a man surreptitiously triggers a malfunction that causes the weapon to detonate when she displays it to the king. Sab then, the king of Zodanga, want to wed Deja in order to put an end to the conflict, but she vehemently opposes the idea. Sab then will become the prince of Helium and be able to control all of Barsoom if he marries her. The Tharks take John to their city in the interim and place him there among the newborn children. John is given a liquid by Sola, a female Thark, at night so that he might learn their language. 
The Tharks give John the command to jump tall in front of everyone the following day. John observes that Tarkas is holding the medallion, and without it, he is unable to return home. Suddenly, two battleships fly overhead. There is conflict between the Helium and the Zodanga. The Tharks who wager on who would win view the conflict as entertainment. Princess Deja is shown engaging in combat in the ships. She tries to steer the ship, but she loses her footing and falls off. John saves the princess by using his newly discovered jumping abilities. As John and Deja are currently engaged in combat with Zodanga warriors, the Tharks begin to cheer for him. John is able to alter the bottle's outcome, giving the Helium the victory but also causing their spacecraft to crash. The Tharks are with Deja and John. Tarkas appoints John as his right-hand man after being impressed by his skills. John is hesitant about the concept but agrees. In the course of their conversation at night, Deja tells John that they are on Mars, also known as Barsoom in their native tongue. John is taken aback and doesn't think she's real. He claims to be from the ground and tells her so. Deja too finds it difficult to accept. Carter is incredibly strong and can leap quite far thanks to his thicker bone density and the planet's low gravity. Then Deja leads him to the Tharks temple, which is off limits to humans. She wishes there was a method for the temple to learn how humans can travel between realms like John did. So La, a sympathetic female Thark, follows them and begs them to stop. John is shown the statue of the goddess Isis by Deja, who also translates some inscriptions on it. The Tharks quickly apprehend the trio and sentence them to death for breaking into the temple, though. Tarkas requests privacy so that he can do the task of severing John's hands while alone in the cell with the others. He discloses to them that he is Sola's father and that he doesn't want them to perish at the hands of the Tharks when they are alone. In order to unravel the enigma surrounding the goddess Isis and return to his planet, he hands John his medallion and instructs him to travel to the river Is. After some time has passed, the Tharks enter the room and discover Tarkas has betrayed them. Tall Hages, an adversary of Tarkas, assumes command and appoints himself the new leader. The trio may then be seen making their way to the Is River. Sola informs John that she is guiding them away from the river and toward the city of Helium even if Deja is directing the way. When John questions her about it, she admits that she was transporting him to her city so she could use him as a soldier in the conflict. John leaves the princess there after being dissatisfied and requests Sola to lead the way. Deja asserts that the only reason she did it was to avoid getting married to Sab Ban. She is invited to go with him to the river. There being no other option, she consents. The three arrive at a large pyramid that is upside down after sailing across the Is River. As they climb up it, John and Deja notice a peculiar blue energy emerging on the ground. Deja understands that this is the ninth ray's strength, which is what she used to create her weapon. They also understand that Carter's arrival on Mars was probably caused by the Ninth Ray sending a copy of himself from Earth to Mars. Then, Matai Shang, the Thern's leader, commands an army of Warhoons to advance. John courageously orders Deja and Sola to flee while taking on the Warhoon army by himself. The Warhoons are defeated by John's army, which the King of Helium sends, saving John. John is taken hurt to Helium. When Deja gets home, her father greets her. She is shocked to see Sab then, the king of Zodanga, there. To ask Deja to marry him and put a stop to the battle, he has arrived with men but no weapons. Deja unwillingly consents to marry him because she is powerless to stop the war in any other way. The next scene has John taking a nap in a room at the Helium Palace. He is brought and covertly taken to Deja's chamber by a soldier who has been designated by her. John is instructed by Deja to use the medallion to return to his house. John leaves her room as the guards walk in. John is actually running away from the soldiers, contrary to what Deja believes. He tries to go outdoors when they depart but is quickly stopped by Matai Shang. John is taken aback by Matai Shang's capacity to transform into any nearby creature. The entire city is getting ready for Sab then and Deja's wedding. With the aid of a tool created by the Ninth Ray, Matai Shang ties John to himself. John's body won't obey his commands. He appears to be under the control of Matai Shang's wrist device. Then Matai Shang tells him that Sab then intends to murder Deja and invade Helium following the wedding. Because Sab then was the most amenable to manipulation, the Thern joined his side in the conflict. However, Matai Shang's true objective is to use Sab then to rule over all of Barsoom. When John is going to be killed by Matai Shang, an extraterrestrial canine he had previously made friends with saves him. 
Matai Shang's wrist device is bit off by it, releasing John. To prevent Deja from marrying Sab then, he quickly gets into a flying vehicle and takes off. John, however, is unable to control the airplane and it crashes near the realm of the Thark. He is being held hostage with a battered Tarkas. John and Tarkas are placed with enormous animals known as the White Apes by Tall Hages, who is now the leader of the Tharks. In front of the whole Thark populace, John somehow succeeds in getting the apes under control. He then challenges Tall Hages to a duel, which he easily wins. Everyone applauds John, who is now the Tharks' new leader. Then he convinces them to assist him in battling the Zodanga. On their route to Deja and Sab Than's wedding, the army of Tharks and John. Just as the wedding is about to begin, John arrives. When Sab then sees him, he attempts to kill Deja, but John foils him just in time. A new battle breaks out between the warriors of the two cities. The Tharks are now supporting Helium, nevertheless. Although Matai Shang succeeds in escaping with John's medallion, the Zodanga quickly loses. John doesn't bother looking for the medallion because he intends to live on Mars with Deja. The crowd applauds when he and Deja get married. He is now Helium's prince. John and Deja are on a balcony the next morning. When Matai Shang enters the room, Deja leaves John outside and enters. Even though John tries to fight him, he is able to use the medallion to return him to Earth. John is coated in dust and has a lengthy beard when he awakens. The fact that he is in the same cave and turns to face Colonel Powell's bones suggests that a lot of time has elapsed since Powell was on Mars. He searches the area for a medallion but is unsuccessful. He is unable to turn around. He becomes wealthy because of the gold inside the cave. He is aware that the world contains more medallions. He establishes a mining company and spends the following 10 years looking for the medallion. Till one day he comes across one online. Although John is overjoyed, he is aware that the Therns have been watching him all along. When he travels to Mars, his body on Earth must be safeguarded because if it is damaged, he will perish on both planets. Because of this, his mausoleum only has an interior entrance. He had planned his demise so that he could go back to Mars. John notes in his journal that he wants Edgar to defend his tomb from the Therns in exchange for money. After reading the diary, Edgar is in disbelief. He enters the mausoleum and tries to open it using a code that turns out to be, Ned, the name John used to call Edgar when he was a child. A thern comes up to Edgar as the mausoleum doors open. He had been watching Edgar, ready to murder John. But someone knocks him out from behind before he can hurt Edgar. When Edgar turns to face his uncle, he is utterly shocked. John accepts Thern's medallion since, as it turns out, he had never discovered it. Everything about him, including his demise, was fabricated in order to seduce a Thern and win his medallion. John then enters his mausoleum and commands Edgar to guard it going forward. He recites the chants that will transport him back to Mars while he lays on the bed holding the medallion. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this.